What's up, everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news, and today's guest is coming off a big win at UFC 288, where he defeated Braxton Smith by a first-round TKO. Always nice to see Parker Porter. Parker, nice seeing you, man. Congrats on the win. Nice seeing you back in the win column. Thank you, man. It's good to be back. So let's get started here with just how this fight came about because if I'm not mistaken, right, kind of short notice, you didn't know about it. And just for you, I mean, like mentally coming off the loss, being in the gym, just kind of being hungry, getting ready for that, you know, when's that next opportunity to come? That phone call comes, you're already in camp, ready to go. So just talk about that mindset as well as you were preparing for this, what ended up being a short notice opportunity. Yeah, we we got pretty much right back to it once we all got back from Australia and readjusted from the time difference and everything. Um, sat down and had a hard conversation with myself and a hard conversation with my coaches and really just kind of completely revamped my uh, my mental state and and stopped making excuses. You know, st- started being a lot more honest with myself about the things I needed to get done and just started doing them, man. You know, really, that's all it came down to is just not – postponing things that didn't need to be postponed. Well, I was going to ask too, was the uh, transition physically one of those things that you happened to address? Because I was going to say, I mean, the big man known for lifting heavy weights is now a lean man that you looked fantastic. You could tell you came in great shape for this fight. Was that part of what you were talking about there? Or, I mean, just talk about that whole, you know, mindset and that transition there, because like I said, you looked fantastic. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm not even uh, where I want to be yet. I'm still working on getting even better. But that was that was a big part of it. You know, like we've we've known, like my team and I and myself have, have have known for a long, long time now that like I'm at my best when I'm a little closer to like 240, 250. I'm a lot leaner, more athletic, just faster in general, and and still you know able to maintain the the same level of strength. Um, so that was, that was a huge part of it, you know, and obviously that also carries over in so many different areas, such as like better conditioning, better agility, uh, speed, uh, offensively and defensively. It just, it was, it was one of those things that, that really, um, in the grand scheme of se- things, seems like a small thing to change, but really has a massive impact, uh, uh on, in so many different areas. I said one of the areas that it definitely had an impact, you could just tell by watching you in this fight, was your ability to move kind of in and out, moving later, laterally in different uh, moments there. You could just tell the movement was definitely so much better than your previous fights there. Is that one of the things that you noticed as well? Because you could just tell, I mean, getting in and out of those exchanges, you looked a lot more comfortable there. Absolutely, yeah. My it just, you know, if you're 30 pounds lighter, that's a lot less weight that you have to move or stop and redirect or, or anything like that so it, it just makes you more agile more more uh more quick to respond to, to things and it just i mean i feel like the uh the results and the actions speak for themselves all right let's start talking a little bit about uh this fight here i mean not obviously a lot to break down you got it done within the first round we did talk a little bit about that you know the physique and the movement there um one of the things that i guess really stood out to everybody too in this fight was your opponent's uh strategy come out real fast he was throwing really heavy obviously for the fans watching they enjoyed it because you could hear the leather being thrown like on tv every time you guys landed that 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 connection there um was that like were you expecting that coming into this fight that he was going to come out heavy and he was going to swing for the fences the way that he did because it seemed like you were more than prepared and ready for it oh absolutely we you know we watched all of his his fights the guy's got five fight win streak you know got all of them being first round finishes most of them in less than two minutes um and we we were expecting him to come out swinging for the fences especially after i just lost to tafa the way that i did you know i, I feel like everybody's kind of looking at me like oh i could do that oh i could do that you know like oh he's got no chin um but uh he just we we didn't think that he was gonna really try to make any dramatic changes for this fight because everything has been working for him as well as it had up until that point and now let's talk about that finish because uh, it was like the broadcasters or the, the UC broadcasting, they weren't really sure as to which one it was or if it was both here. Did Braxton from coming out so quick and so fast, did he run out of gas or was it the knee that you landed or was it both? And I guess just kind of take us through that whole finishing sequence because obviously the knee is what led to him getting down and you finishing with the ground and pound. I, I feel like it was a combination of the two. I think he was starting to get tired, maybe a little frustrated with the fact that he couldn't catch me 
as easily as he was hoping to. Um, and even the, the one or two shots that, that did connect, they didn't really have the uh, impact that he was hoping for. Um, so I think between that, um, him starting to gas out, I don't think he gassed out as bad as people are trying to say that he did. Um, but uh, it, it definitely, you know, he, he started to tire and I was obviously just starting to really kind of wind up, if anything. Um, and then throwing that knee in there, getting him, you know, right, right in the, the liver, solar plexus area, kind of able to snap him down and, and really just bring him into the territory where I knew I, I had the clear advantage. So you know what it's like to get a win inside of the octagon, but this was your first UFC finish. I'm sure a very special moment for you. Uh, obviously, congratulations on that there. Just, you know, how good did that feel to get the finish in there? It was amazing, man. It was it was such a, a pivotal win for me because it was the last fight on my current contract. Um, I, you know, coming off of a two fight, uh, two, two fight loss slide, uh, really trying to make sure that I got myself back in the, the win column. I put a lot of pressure on myself uh, in, in good ways, and my team helped direct that in a positive way. Um, and then on top of it, my, my mom and my wife were able to be there in person in the house for the first time in all of my now seven fights. Uh, so it was just – it, it would have felt great regardless of who was there, but the fact that everything riding on it the way that it was and the people that were present were present, um, it, it just – it completely catapulted and elevated that that sensation for me to a whole new level. All right, so I do want to talk about the family stuff uh, too here that you briefly mentioned there. But before we get into that, I know that you just said there uh, that was the last fight on the um, previous contract. Did you re-sign a new contract yet? Are those negotiations going on now? It's kind of that whole process there. That's yeah. We're still we're still waiting for the the new contract to come through, and and uh, you know I, I have a good feeling that we're going to work out something no problem at all. I see you have a great management team too behind you. They're used to dealing with the UFC. I'm sure that all get squared away soon. There. Uh, let's talk about this family stuff down here a little bit. You mentioned about your your wife and your mom being there. That was special for you. Uh, obviously, we saw after the fight a little emotional on the microphone there with everything with the finish yeah. and the family being there and everything. <laughs> so just what was it like afterwards? Like when you finally got back to the locker room and you got to see not only your coaches and management, but then you know your wife comes back and you get to see your mom and everybody. That special moment. Uh, backstage it was it was incredible just you know like this since my my wife has been at every single one of my fights since we started dating and and since i've been in the ufc she hasn't been able to come because she's also a teacher um and it's it's just difficult for teachers to coordinate their schedule with time off and travel and things like that flights don't always line up the way you want them to and things like that um and then of course my mother's been my biggest supporter from day one, ever since I decided like, Hey, I'm going to try this professional fighting thing. Um, so that, to have them both there, not just for a win, but in a, in a, a first round finish, my very first finish in the UFC being is such a momentous occasion. Um, it just, the feeling is, is virtually indescribable. And, uh, it was, it was amazing. Like a lot of times after a fight, the team and I will, you know, we'll go, get dinner and a couple of drinks and kind of celebrate, stay up late. And it was all I wanted to do was get back to our hotel and hang out with, with my family and my team. And that's exactly what we did. We ended up hanging out in the lobby, um, the, 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 the lobby bar at the hotel we were at just ordered a pizza and had a couple of drinks and, and kept it really mellow. We were actually in bed by like probably like midnight. It was awesome. You know, just trying to, bring the nerves back down to a manageable level so I could actually fall asleep and, uh, and, and just really enjoy the moment. Well, I know a lot of people that have kids will say that midnight is a late night for parents. So I guess you could say it was a late night for you guys. That's for sure. So, yeah, Yeah, but that's a good point. So I know obviously celebrating the win, celebrating with the family, one other celebration too, though, right? You recently got your black belt in jujitsu. What was that like? And then does that mean that we're going to see a little bit more of that in the uh, the arsenal there? Maybe a little bit more takedowns, some submissions, maybe a little bit more ground and pounds, all that? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like, I don't think it's any secret that I've got uh, uh, plenty of good boxing and kickboxing, um, but I've... I've always had pretty good grappling um you know getting my black belt this this past december 
um, it was just a, a momentous occasion for me on, on so many levels. It was one of those things that I wasn't even sure if I would continue to try to pursue until after I was done competing professionally. Um, but getting that was, was probably right behind the, the, the feeling and, and of, a, of accomplishment that I had in my win on this past Saturday. Um, but you know, like I, I've, I've, I've had the, the wrestling, wrestling, the, the, the jujitsu, the, um, just the, the general grappling um, that I that I have now, and I just haven't been utilizing it to the advantages that I sh- that I should be. So you can definitely expect like, to see a lot more of that. I've always been a pretty well rounded fighter, but I always kind of get uh, sucked into you know just having a, a proverbial pissing contest of like who can hit each other more times the hardest. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing those uh, wrinkles in the game there. And I guess just with that being said, before we wrap things up today, big question, uh, what's next for you? And obviously step one is to get that new contract and and sign that one. That should be on the horizon here pretty soon. Uh, Then after that, is it going to be Boston? I know we briefly talked about that off air here. Uh, You want to get on that Boston card so your kids will be able to go this time? Is that that's kind of what you're you're looking at? Yes, I would. I would absolutely love to be on that Boston card. Uh, the New Jersey card was amazing because it was so close to home and the fact that everybody could be there. Uh, if I do manage to get on that Boston card, which I'm hoping I will, um, then that's that's something I'd be able to make sure that my kids are at as well. So um, that's uh, that's the game plan. That's the focus right now. And we're we're essentially already back in the gym with that in mind. All right, Parker, it's been a pleasure as always. Really appreciate all the time here today. Congrats again on the win. Uh, just last thing before you head out for the day, social media so people know where to follow you at, uh, management, sponsorships, all that good stuff. Anything you got to plug, floor is yours. Social media, follow me on Instagram at Parker Porter MMA. Um, I got to thank my my management team at Top Game, Top Game Management, at Tyson Chardier. Um, of course, my coaches, Kia Galampour, Ed Thornton, Dan Frazik, you know, and everybody along the way that's that's had a, a hand in helping me get to the point where I'm at right now. I, I appreciate it. You know, like it's as much a win for you as far as I'm concerned as it is for me. Um, and of course, big shout out to all my guys over at my gym, Heavy Hitters. <laughs>